Hi-ho. I was uh, pulling out this PDP-11 to fiddle with last weekend, and I decided that, given my extraordinary run of bad luck, that I would do this properly. And so I dismantled the unit, and I disconnected the power rails from the power supply, which is over here right now. And I disconnected... So that disconnected the drives. We have a dual five and a quarter floppy drive and a, I think these are MFM hard disk, might be SD, and the card cage itself. This is the processor board, by the way, and let's see the rest of the card cage in there. And I powered the power supply up. Actually, that's a lie. I pulled the power supply out first and I cracked it open and I inspected it because in these older power supplies it's not uncommon for um, components to fail. In particular the capacitors like these electrolytics here which you can usually tell because the top is um, bubbled, it is going to blow. And so I thoroughly inspected the power supply first and it has these rather large capacitors so I paid a lot of attention and I looked for anything that looked suspicious, that looked darkened, might be unhealthy, and it all looked good. And so I powered it on, and I used my voltmeter to inspect the 5 and the 12 volt rails. And everything was good. There was low ripple. It um, was right on the money. And so I put the connectors back on the power supply, and I plugged in the card gauge. And I powered it up. And the LEDs here on the board twinkled in roughly the right order. I think it's correct from what I've read. And I went, this is good. It lives. And I didn't bother hooking up the drives yet because I knew that this should spit out something on the serial console. So I hooked up the serial console line. And my VT240 now works again-ish. Uh, the NVRAM error that I had, I read that if you resave your configuration... It will come back to life, and it seems to. Uh, so I hooked her up, and I got nothing, and so I powered it off, and I tried different settings. I had it on 8N1, and so I tried 7E1, and I turned it on, and it didn't work, and I turned it off again, and I spotted that there were board rates on here, and it wasn't set to 9600, so I set it to 9600, and then I wasn't quite sure what this one did, and then I worked it, this one went to this connector, and this one went to that connector, and this is the console connector, and... That didn't get me anywhere, and so I did some thinking for a while, and I thought that I should try a null modem cable with the receive and transmit lines crossed. And that did give me something, uh, which I thought was awfully odd, because it specifically marked console. Why in the hell would you need a null modem block for a console port? But anyway, so I had all of that, and I flipped it back off, and I thought, well, maybe it um, is an 8-in-1, maybe it really is 7-E-1. And so I switched this to 7E1, and I powered it on, and um, I was waiting for the gibberish to show up, or hopefully real text, and there was this sound like somebody had stepped on a couple hundred ducks simultaneously. And there was a, a hiss, and a, a roar, and a crackle, and... As I was trying to decide whether I should turn it off here or unplug it here, there was this beautiful plume of ejected smoke flew out of the top. And I rushed over and pulled the plug out and everything went silent. And there's that, that smell where well, you can see the uh, little scorched remains of uh, whatever was in there. Uh, and it still smells delightful. And, well, it just follows with my luck, doesn't it? So, again, I took this whole fucking thing back apart. And this board here, which has the IEC 120, oh, sorry, 110 volt uh, connector, and it actually sits here. And it has a couple of filtering capacitors that go across the hot and the neutral. And you'll see this one here has had a bit of an oopsie-daisy. Uh, this is the 
remainder of it. And although it looks like glass and it feels like glass, apparently it's some kind of plastic. And I appreciate that this thing does not have a macro lens good enough that you can see what the hell's going on here, but she is woefully scorched and blowing out. Uh, now, thankfully, these things aren't too horrendously uncommon, so I should be able to pick another one up for a couple bucks and replace it. And I can't use these because it's designed for DC and this is okay with AC voltage, but it goes to tell you even when you go through all of the effort to doing things the right way and being very cool and calm and methodical, shit will still happen. Well, that's it for me. Have a wonderful afternoon or evening. Adios.